This is my hardcore world that I started on July 25th, 2022. And over the last year and a half, this has been the home for Hardcore Minecraft Season 2 on my channel. Throughout that time, I've survived 1,500 days and built up a whole lot of really cool things. And today is the day where I finally say goodbye to the best Minecraft world I have ever made. I kind of wanted to just use this video to walk through this world one more time and show off some of the builds. So why not start where this whole thing began with my starter house. I'm still a really big fan of this starter house design. Really like the mangrove wood. It's just such a pain to gather, especially early game. It really does suck. But the mangrove wood and the mud I used for the first floor just look awesome together. I think I've become a much better builder throughout my time on this world, but I still think this house holds up pretty well. Really big fan of this section back here. I don't even really use this storage at all but this is still one of my favorite parts of the build probably. Before I go any further and look at any of the other builds, let me also point out that there will be a world download link in the description. I will also put a link to a video in the description detailing how you go about actually accessing a world download link in Minecraft. Just in case there's anyone out there who wants to play my world, but has no idea how to do that <laughs> even once they've downloaded it. But I'm still really proud of how this starter area turned out. Everything is all interconnected with pathways that is entirely walkable, even up these like weird hills and stuff. Obviously, I fly around most of the time, but this whole spot is still walkable. You can go all the way around the tree, a couple different pathway designs all about, a bunch of custom trees. I spent like an hour, hour and a half one day uh, getting all these custom trees where they need to be. I tried to make it so there was no vanilla trees within like the confines of my starter area. Honestly, might have missed one, but I did my best. <laughs> the tavern over here is still definitely one of my favorite builds I've ever done. Really enjoy how this one turned out. I think it's a really good size and a good spot too in this area. And it's incredibly useful considering it's my storage room. But if I'm being honest, I think my single favorite section of this entire world is what I'm looking at right now this farming village, and the gatehouse to the city. I just love this view so much. I don't know, there's just something about it. It looks so good. <laughs> there's just something about a big wheat field, man. It just does things to me, I don't know. And then this gatehouse turned out really, really good. This was entirely freehand built. I didn't really use too much creative mode when it comes to this world. Like all I really knew going into this build was I just kind of knew the shape in my head. <laughs> that was kind of it. And then I kind of just freestyled the rest and I think it turned out really well. And once you actually get into the city, I think the main road here looks pretty cool. It's just really, really bare. I didn't give too much love to this city. I should have given it more for sure, but that kind of leads into the reason why I wanted to start a new world to begin with. I was just feeling a little bit burnt out on this world. And instead of trying to force myself to continue playing it, potentially doing something I didn't want to do and making builds I wasn't really proud of, I decided that this world has just run its course and it was time to start over. There are actually a few things that I did do between last episode and now. For example, I terraformed right here, where I'm looking at right now. This used to be like all floating, but now it's actually connected to the ground. So that's nice. And I also named my animals. I asked for some name suggestions in the last episode on this world, and I took a couple from the comments. So we got Belle, we have Gandalf the Grey as the two cats, and then downstairs here, my day one best friend, this bird, is named Crisco. I honestly haven't really walked around at nighttime too much in this world, but this looks sick. Well, let's talk about one of the newer builds in this video, and that is this castle. Hold on, landing this first try for sure. Um, yeah, so this castle over here. This is still the only build in this world that I have used Lightmatica for, and I think it turned out incredibly well. Now, I never really got to the terraforming all the way around. It looks really strange. It's just chilling up on this really flat platform. I'm still definitely in love with this build. We might have to repurpose this later in a different world. Because right now, it's kind of just a shell. There's nothing going on on the inside. So maybe this build will make a return one day. I don't know. But let's pop through the nether portal tree. Definitely the tallest build I have on this world. And let's head into my favorite single build in this world. Now, I know I mentioned that the farming village and the, the gatehouse and stuff was my favorite section, but the nether hub I made is my favorite single building in this entire world. Again, this was not planned in creative mode using Lightmatica or anything like that. This was completely freehand and I love how this turned out. Throughout the whole process of building this thing, I thought this was gonna look like absolute garbage, but it really turned out and looks awesome. I still really like the glass effect I used for the windows to try to make them look a little bit foggy. Just mix some white stained glass with some regular glass and I think it looks really cool. But now that we are in the nether, let's head towards spawn. Because here in my spawn is my most recent build on this world my iron factory. Not the absolute best thing I've ever built, but I still think it turned out really well. One small feature of this that I'm a really big fan of is for these like copper pipes over here, which I did not wax, I meant to, but I use some of the pots just in with the rest of the copper because it just kind of looks like a skinnier copper block to me. So I kind of feel like it fit pretty well. This is also the first time I worked with some different texturing on my walls. I tried to use some shadows in some instances. Like if you look up here on the top, I used some spruce wood on like the corners of the mud section. 
just to kind of look like a darker piece of mud. Did a similar thing down here with the acacia wood and the bricks, but there's a different kind of effect going on. That's not really a shadow, sort of something else, but still think it looks nice. And then this interior came along pretty well too. Doesn't really look like a factory, but I'm a big fan of the roof, like all the foliage in here. Looks pretty cool. Gonna pop back through the nether portal and we're going to look at a project that I think I'm going to continue in my new hardcore world. This project should be coming to view any second now. There it is, my spooky village. Now I started this two Halloweens ago and I expanded it last Halloween. And I would love to continue this idea in my new hardcore world. Now, obviously not with this specific village, I'd have to make another one, but I just love the idea of adding to a spooky village every Halloween. But just like my starter area, this thing is all completely walkable. There's a bunch of decorations all over the place, a bunch of pumpkins, a couple of melons. You know, the houses here are all pretty bare still. There's not too much decoration going on, but I still think this area looks really cool. I had to walk back to my storage tavern because uh, I ran out of rockets, but now we should have enough to finish off this video. While I'm here though, let me shout out all of my YouTube members. So these are all of the people who joined my YouTube channel throughout this series. And this is still going to be a thing in my new hardcore world by the way so if you'd like to be named a block in that world you can go ahead and join my youtube channel and become a shramalam i'm thinking about some other tiers i can have but as of now it's just that one where you get to be named a block but shout out to all of these beautiful people and also i guess i should probably go through my stats before i forget this is something i will totally forget to do and i feel like there's probably someone out here who would like to see some stats of a 1500 day hardcore world now, I gotta be honest, I sleep a lot. I think I've slept probably like 90% of the days on this world. There are some YouTubers who don't sleep at all. I can't do that. Too scared to die, if I'm being honest. So, uh, I probably didn't get as much done as some other YouTubers. But anyway, I'll just kind of slowly scroll through everything here. If there's anything you would like to stop on, obviously you can just pause the video. Yeah, time slept in bed, 1,338. Slept for many of my days. Wait, what does this even mean? You can clean a shulker box? I've never even known of that before. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> but hopping over to the items, times mined. My most mined item, of course, is stone. Just under 100,000. That's definitely in first, <laughs> very much so. Second place is grass and then dirt, but you can bind those together for like 68,000. Not as far off then, but still, <laughs> I've mined so much more stone than anything else. Netherrack is fourth because of my grind to get all of my netherite armor and stuff. Of course, you gotta get your spruce in there, deep slate, probably my two most common building blocks in this world. I use a ton of leaves, strip spruce. I've mined 10,000 strip spruce because at some point in this world, I decided to start stripping my logs before I mine them. Uh, oak logs, 10,000, you know, all the blocks I typically build with. Not too many things broken here. Times crafted, a whole bunch of spruce planks, of course. Times used, 173,980 times on my netherite pickaxe. My axe is second, then my netherite shovel, and then my diamond pickaxe, look at that. I used the pickaxe over 200,000 times in this world. <laughs> Picked up a butt ton of stone, dropped a butt ton of ender pearls because of my enderman experience farm. Going through the mobs here, I've killed 86 blaze. All right, 282 cows, 1,319 creepers. But uh, yeah, enderman is definitely number one, 5,751. I killed a frog. I should be put in prison. Why did I do that? <laughs> I really don't remember ever killing a frog. There's gotta be something I haven't killed in here, right? Surely. Maybe it only shows up if you killed it because I'm sure there's probably a mob in here I haven't killed. Unless maybe these are all the mobs in Minecraft. Actually, no, they're for sure not. I haven't killed a warden yet. So I'm assuming then it's only mobs that I've killed. Okay, well, anyway, uh, yeah, Enderman, definitely number one. I'm still really upset about the frog. Also way too many squid. <laughs> I used a lot of dark prismarine <laughs> for my builds. Also, I find it funny that throughout my entire time in this world, I only killed two sheep and probably not even one pig. I normally don't use pigs for my food. I don't know, kind of just go straight for the cows. See, look at that. I even just slept when... <laughs> doesn't even really matter if I die at this point, <laughs> but I just, I'm just addicted to it, man. I can't stop sleeping in Minecraft. I'm just too scared to go out at night. I don't know. Like, I'm sure I'd be fine. I don't really think I would have died by now if I hadn't slept, because to be fair, once you get netherite armor and like totems and stuff, it's pretty difficult to die in Minecraft. But let me head off in this direction, because there are two builds out here I just want to revisit again. These are two villages I made, one birch village and one dark oak village. I wanted to do more videos like this where I made villages and biomes that don't exist. I had planned to do like an ocean one, I just kind of never got around to it, but these look really cool to me, man. I really like the color palette of this building here with the white walls and the birch roof. I'm starting to try to appreciate birch a little bit more. It was my least favorite wood type for a while. I don't know if it still is. I feel like almost any type of wood looks pretty good now. Like even that version of it looks good. 
with this color palette over here with like white blocks and stuff. Like it adds some texture. So I might still hate on it for the meme, but just know I don't really hate Birch all that much. Uh, but yeah, everything here is completely empty. That kind of leads me into something I wanted to talk about with my new worlds. I'll probably bring this up in my next episode of Hardcore Season 3, but I wanna make it a goal for that world where I do interiors for everything and I completely finish every single build. Like I kind of pulled a green in here in some sections, all right? Like I did the back of these builds, but like over here, there should be a window there. There should be a stair there. Okay, didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry, grass. There should be a stair there and a stair there and then probably a trap door in the middle. I just never did it. And all of these interiors are completely empty. I don't want that to happen in my next world. I want all of my buildings and all of my projects to be completely done before I post the video. Anyway, small tangent aside, <laughs> let's move on to the Dark Oak Village, which is connected via pathway to this Birch Village. And I really wanna build in this style again. I love this like fantasy style with the buildings being pretty tall and all stacked on each other and stuff and the roofs like jutting out a little bit more than normal. This building looks pretty cool. This was kind of supposed to be a library, um, but you know, once more, no interior at all. Same goes with all the rest of these houses, of course. And then we have this little mushroom patch in the middle. But let's pop through the nether portal again, because there's another build out in this area that I want to showcase. And this is absolutely a farm I am going to build again. This is my guardian farm with a really sick tower on top of it. What with an entirely different tower design from what I'm used to, I typically just make them like completely straight up, getting smaller as they go up. This one, I decided to make it like really jut out far on the top and I think it looks cool. But I went with these like floating islands that are like super overgrown and grassy and stuff like that. But uh, you know, obviously you can probably tell by now, the interior is completely empty, but there is the farm on the inside and you get down to the farm <laughs> via this really sketchy scaffolding right here. But this farm is insane. Let me just turn my hostile creatures down for a second because they're gonna be really loud. Any, any second now, here they all come. There's just so many. That's not even that many, honestly. Usually there's a lot more. There's like double this. Regardless though, they're all one hit. You get so much experience. This is how I've been healing up my tools ever since I built this thing. Dark Prismarine is one of the best blocks in this game, in my opinion. So having a pretty easy way to get part of the crafting recipe is necessary for me for sure. And funny thing about this build, I didn't clip any of these glow berries. So if I stayed here long enough, they'd all just go all the way down to the ocean. I honestly didn't even know that you could clip them when I was building this thing and I just never bothered going back to actually do it. And yeah, those are some of my favorite builds that I have on this world. I've had so many great memories on this world. I mean, somehow the YouTube algorithm really liked what I did on this world because my YouTube channel grew a ton throughout my time recording this series. So I'm insanely grateful to have had this world. Thank you guys so much for deciding to stop by, for deciding to subscribe. It honestly means so much to me. And if you liked this world, you're going to absolutely love Hardcore Minecraft Season 3. Episode 1 has already aired, so if you haven't seen it yet, feel free to go check it out. I plan to make that world bigger and better than this one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that because, I don't know, this world's just going to be so nostalgic to me for so long. I feel like I'm always going to have some kind of bias towards this one. If you want to watch my entire journey, though, on this world, I do have three movies, each spanning 500 Minecraft days. I think it totals like six hours of content, so if you're looking to kill a lot of time, you know where to go. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching one final time. I really hope you guys enjoyed everything I did on this world, and I hope you're looking forward to Season 3 of Hardcore Minecraft. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.